Hello, welcome to Stalo Gaming. I would like to give a huge thank you to Start Crafts for your amazing, sweet shout out. Start creates low poly retro devlogs and does it all with an awesome VTuber model. My vision for the beginning of this game is to have the player do three tasks before serving customers. As you may know, the Musical Pete is the co-creator of this game, so since neither of us had a crumbled up computer paper, he suggested to use pxhere.com, not sponsored, to create the to-do list. So the to-do list will be on a clipboard and that clipboard will be on the wall. So when the player is near the clipboard and is inside the collider, I want a text to show up, basically telling the player which button to press to display the to-do list. I used untrigger enter so you can see that the text is only showing up as I'm entering the collider. My solution was to change it to untrigger stay, so even if the player is just standing there not doing anything, the text won't disappear anymore. But nope, the bugs don't end there. The next day I did another coding mistake. I'm having it so that when the player presses E, the to-do list will disappear. But I put that logic in the wrong spot. I placed it inside the display text method, which is where the opening to-do list logic is. So I just fixed it by creating separate methods for each key press. One of the first tasks is to sweep the restaurant. So I used Blender Studies how to model a floor brush tutorial to create a broom. and I really like how it turned out. Right after that, because the grind doesn't stop apparently, I created a script so that the player can pick up the broom with space and then drop it with E. For the sweeping task, when the player picks up the broom, I want certain areas of the restaurant to glow. So to solve that, I used Speed Tutor's Free Outline Shader in Unity tutorial. But now that I'm looking back on it, I think I should do floor stains instead of glowing objects around the restaurant. Please let me know what you think about that. I dove into the outline scripts because I wanted to see how the author programmed it all. And let's just pretend we didn't see this. For the glowing sweeping areas, my logic was to disable that game object that had the glow outline and then have it enabled when the player holds the broom. But as the theme of this video goes, it didn't work on the first try. I'm embarrassed to say that I couldn't solve this for a couple of days. I was rhetorically ripping my hair off until finally, like in the depths of Google, I read someone say that I should just enable and disable the mesh renderer because if I disable the whole game object, how can it enable itself if it's already disabled? Before I was able to solve that issue though, I did what any sane person would do and just skipped it, ignored it, and I went on to the next thing that I thought I could do. So this is for the restock or refilling of the ingredients task. I'm basically doing an open and closed door animation for the fridge. I thought I needed both the animation and the animation clip, but what that did instead was activate a ghost that's now haunting the office. I did some mumbo jumbo magic in the animation tab. That still didn't work, so then I created a new vector 3 with the X, Y, and Z positions of the open door. But all that did was just spawn the fridge into the lobby of the restaurant. Turns out all I really needed to do was put zeros in that line of code where I call the animation in. And I only needed the animator component in the script. And that finally worked. I'm shocked. I added the meat in the fridge. I find it funny that I'm putting the ingredients in the cardboard boxes. Since this restaurant isn't that well maintained, it's unkept, there's no health inspector as far as I know of. It probably gives the ingredients seasoning and that flavor it needs from the cardboard. Ah, Sunday. The holy day for bugs. I don't know what the static stuff were on the floor. Turns out it was just like sesames from the top bun. So the same thing I did with the sweeping task, I wanted to do for the wiping task and make the tables glow. But for some reason that wasn't working. But like I said, I think I should do stains on the table instead of the outline. So I don't know what I'm doing, but I guess I'm just doing anything I can to make it work. I decided to stop programming for a while and start creating the parking lot and like the outside ambiance of the restaurant. I basically just did the same thing as I did with the coworker in the last video. 
To get the pictures of the concrete, I actually had to see the sun and go outside for the first time in a couple of days, but it was so, so worth it, kind of. I had to take a break from creating the game, so I just started playing Stardew instead. But the sad thing about that was that I also grind on Stardew. Like, I can't relax unless I'm doing something and feel productive. So it was fun while it lasted, <laughs> but I was so stressed playing Stardew also. I saw in a video that if you take off shadows, it'll make your game look more PS1-y. Pete has made the music for 99% of my games or our games at this point, so I just want you to hear this. I used Pixelbook Studio's Raycast tutorial to learn a wee bit about Raycast. Towards the end of the week, Pete taught me how to better create a task manager script for each task, which I can explain more in the next video if you'd like. I'm forever grateful for him because the way I code now are from what he's picked up from school and game jams. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!